Hello. So our lesson on 5.3, which is solving trigonometric equations, is going to be broken up into two parts. Um, basically, it's separated by difficulty. So the, the first part is the easier section, uh, followed up by the second part, which has more challenging um, equations for us to solve. So you're definitely going to want a reference of a unit circle handy when we do this lesson. And I'm just hoping my tablet decides to work at some point here. There we go. All right. And let's take a look. Um, let's see, this is not on your notes page, but this is a nice, nice diagram where it shows you the curve of a cosine function. And also on the same coordinate plane has the line y equals one half graph. So if we're trying to solve the equation, when does the cosine of x or theta, whatever variable, equals one half, you can see there's multiple places where that occurs. And there is a sort of pattern to it, if you will. So if you want to think about the unit circle, beginning at 0 radians and going to 2 pi radians, I see that there are two places where these two functions intersect. And pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Again, that would be us looking at the unit circle and looking at all the um, the common <laughs> uh, unit circle ordered pairs that we are given, and that the cosine value was 1 half at each of these values in the unit circle. But remember, co-terminal angles, you can keep doing rotations backwards and forwards, so we can keep adding 2 pi and subtracting 2 pi from there. So if they say from 0 to 2 pi, you just have to look at your unit circle and figure out where this is true, so pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But if no interval is specified, you literally would have to tell me every single solution where that occurs. And the way we're going to write that is by adding a series of rotations. Now this is the way your book does it. Um, and then if you look at my notes, like you'll see this a lot for me, plus and minus 2 pi k. It's just like an old habit of mine to say plus and minus, even though k is an integer, so it's already inherently positive or negative. Um, but I use k instead of n. n is an integer, k is an integer. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, the idea is I'm going to be looking for you to be adding this uh, rotation of 2 pi, uh, various rotations of 2 pi. Now there's a note here written by my counterpart teacher here. She says it can also be written as positive and negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n because cosine is even. So if you think about the graph of cosine, right? Going like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really poorly done. This is to be a straight line. This is positive pi over 3. This is negative pi over 3. Um, that's another way for you to write it. It can get really confusing as far as like what's an acceptable answer and what's not. So don't try to get fancy. Um, I come up with a weird way to say it. I just want to expose you to the different varieties of solutions that you can be written, that it can be written as, because on standardized testing, if it's multiple choice, you don't really control how it's written. Or if you look in the back of the textbook, like you don't control how they write the answer. So you might have the correct answer, they just have it in a different format, and you have to be able to understand that you, you're looking at the same thing. Um, we have to use some algebra properties here. We're going to be solving a lot of equations that inherently are easy equations to solve. You know, things where we square root both sides, we want to do some factoring. Uh, there's an underline here for quadratic formula. Uh, um, rewriting as a single function, so in other words, getting common denominators before you can solve. Uh, there's a lot of algebraic tricks and manipulations that we're going to try. Factoring is the biggest one that we're going to utilize today, in my opinion. So here, um, this is already worked out on your notes, it says, so if you're taking notes along with me, you just kind of watch this happen. I look at this equation and I see here's a term and here's a term. And algebraically speaking, these are not like terms, so I can't combine them, but I do see they have a common cosine term within there. So what if we were to factor the cosine out? That would give me cosine times tangent of x minus 1. And now I have essentially like what resembles a quadratic in a sense where there's two factors multiplied together. So you're going to take each factor and you're going to set them equal to 0 and you're going to solve them. So cosine of x, when does it equal 0? And then the tangent of x minus 1, when does that equal 0? So here, if I think about on the unit circle, if I had that next to me, you know, when is the cosine 0? Um, that would be at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. Okay, triple check there. Okay, I'm going to leave that for a moment. Let's look at tangent. Um, solving this equation, I'd add 1 to both sides, and I'd say, when does the tangent equal to 1? Um, that would be where the sine and cosine are the same value, so you're looking, and it's positive 1, notice. So I can only be looking at quadrants 1 and 3. So we are looking at pi over 4 mm -hmm. 
and 5 pi over 4. Now, if I wasn't thinking very carefully, I would just box in all four of these answers and say, there we go, because it just said they want to model my solutions between 0 and 2 pi. But the original problem has a tangent value as a term. And tangent's the weird one, tangent and cotangent, where like, I have to be careful about when it's undefined. If I think about my unit circle up here at pi over 2, this is the ordered pair um, 0, 1. If I set up my tangent ratio, that's undefined. So since tangent is undefined at actually both these values, I can't use them even though they are a solution to my cosine, but they don't work for the overall problem. So the only two solutions that work here are pi over 4 and pi over, pi over 4. That was actually a really tricky question. Not the algebraic components of it, but knowing that even though I found solutions, um, that's already worked out. <laughs> uh, even though I found solutions, they actually didn't work because of the original problem. There was an inherent domain issue, if you want to think of it that way. All right, so this example is kind of already done for you. And there's only a singular sine function in there, although it is squared. So if you do some isolation, subtract the 1, divide by 4, uh, square root both sides. And then remember, when you square root an, a fraction here, you square root the numerator and denominator separately. But don't forget your algebra rules. You know, square rooting an equation, you still have a plus or minus. So then you look at the unit circle and say, when is my sine value coming out to a positive or negative square root of 3 over 2? And that happens four places. So we'd be listing out all four of those, um, which are solutions to that that equation there. And it does say, well, I don't know if it's specified between 0 and 2 pi or not. But. All right, so when you solve for any values of x, or all values of x, <clears throat> where they don't say between 0 and 2 pi or 0 pi, um, your book likes to write it as x plus 2 pi and 2n pi. Um, you're going to see from Hoffbauer and myself, we like to write plus and minus. 2 pi n or plus and minus 2 pi k. We understand what everyone's trying to say when we say that. Uh, if you claim that n is any integer, you don't have to put a plus or minus because integers can be negative as well. So um, for that particular question, I think they were referring to that one maybe. I'm not sure what they're referring to here, but they're showing you that if you're referring to all solutions, maybe, side x, cosine x, tangent. know if they're referring to a previous problem or not. Sorry. Moment. Sine x, cosine x, x plus pi. Okay. <clears throat> so just tangent. They're just doing plus pi, because remember, period, the tangent is pi. We'll talk more about tangent in a moment. All right, moving on. Um, this is also worked out for you for some reason on your paper. So it does say find all solutions. So we're going to do that weird 2 pi thing in a moment. So solving this equation, there's multiple sine um, functions here. So I'm going to collect all the signs together. I'm going to add sine x. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract the square root of 3. Let's see what happens. So I have 2 sine x equals negative square root of 3. And then isolating for the sine function, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So the question now is sine of x, when is it negative square root of 3 over 2? So I'm referring first to my unit circle. <clears throat> it's not quadrants 1 or 2. Um, it'd be down in quadrants 3 and 4. So, off the top of my head, I'm probably going to mess this up. So, please have <sighs> I'm just going to cheat because I always do this one wrong. <laughs> 4 pi over 3 is this one down here. And then 5 pi over 3. Because the other place where sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now, that's not good enough as far as an answer because it says all solutions. So what we're going to say is 4 pi over 3, um, and in my notes you'll see plus and minus 2 pi k, but in half hours notes you'll see plus and minus 2 pi n, and then same thing here, 5 pi over 3 plus and minus rotations. Okay, so n, k, I don't care what you use. All right. I think that was it. All right, and that's already worked out for you. So let's skip to the next problem. This one is finally not worked out, and it does say for all solutions, all values of x. So once we find the unit circle measurements, we're going to talk about how to create a, an interval that represents everything. So when is cosine negative 1? Well, goodness is on the unit circle. I think that only occurs one time. Isn't that only at pi? So all solutions, plus and minus 2 pi n, 2 pi k. I don't really care what you do. There's probably other ways to write that. Um, 
I don't know if they bother though. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Actually, I can't really think of another way to write that one. Uh, zero product property of factoring. So we saw an example earlier in the notes where we factored out a tangent. Well, in this example here, there's a common factor of sine that they factored out and they took out. And that left them with sine x minus 1 as the other factor. So then they took both factors and set them equal to 0 and solved. So, um, my face is covering up this writing down here. Just remember that we need to find all possible solutions, just like in algebra, when you factor something, you have to consider all the possible factors. And then in trig, we have the extra added bonus of going back and making sure, like remember that tangent one, where <clears throat> even though the cosine value gave us some radian measures that worked for cosine, it didn't work for the tangent, so therefore we to throw it out. All right, so here we have a common factor of, looks to me like sine, so if we factor out a sine, we're still going to be left with sine squared minus 4. Now, this thing I wrote in black, technically you can factor it more if you'd like, otherwise it is just a square rooting problem that we could set equal to 0 and solve, so I'm just going to do that. So the first factor, sine x equals 0, we'll solve that in a moment, and then this factor if we were to solve this, we would first add the 4 and then square root both sides. I keep losing my variables. Alright, so square rooting both sides, taking all algebra. I got sine of x equals plus and minus 2. So that's kind of a weird thought, because if you think about this, the regular sine function, it, it's bounded between negative 1 and 1, so like that's not going to happen. So the good news is I don't have to consider this at all. But what is sine 0? Uh, a few places. <laughs> so 0, um, pi, and that's it. So at first, what a lot of kids will write is 0 plus and minus a rotation set, and then pi plus and minus 2 pi n. But if you think about like the unit circle, what you're doing is you're, you're giving me this value and this value. So there's many other ways you can write that. And you just keep rotating between the two. So like you, 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 you. <laughs> um, you can say 0 plus and minus oops, pi n, like for a half rotation. I think that would work. That's actually what I have written down in my notes. So I think that's the, um, I guess we'll say it's the easiest way to write it, the simplest way, maybe. Um, but I'm not going to fault you if you can't figure out a simpler way to write your solutions. Um, and it does help sometimes if you just start listing out the possible solutions and then see a, um, a pattern. What I do is I kind of think about the unit circle. I'm very visual. And I think about, you know, is there a pattern to my rotations? And if I notice I'm just rotating half of a rotation every time, then I know I can just start at zero and keep adding pi. So, whatever. Don't get hung up on the simpler version of it. I just want you to know that if you look at my answer key and you don't quite match mine, that might be what's going on. So this next one, I see two terms, and within those two terms, we do have a common cosine. So let's factor that cosine out. We have sine x minus 3 equals 0. So another case of, you know, set each of these equal to 0. Cosine equals 0, and then sine of x minus 3 equals 0. So this is going to be another case where if you add the 3 over, and you're going to ask yourself, when does sine equal 3? Well, it doesn't, so just cross that out. Pretty boring. <laughs> All right. So cosine, what is it, 0? Uh, that would be at pi. No, pi over 2. <laughs> and 3 pi over 2. So again, thinking about my unit circle, that's u. And that's u. So if we started at pi over 2, and then we just kept adding a half rotation, not 2, half rotation, so pi, this is probably the simplest way to write the answer. Pi over 2 plus and minus pi n, or pi k. Um, yeah, that's what I have written in my notes, I think. Maybe. What I've written in my notes it looks like gibberish right now. Um, if you wrote it as pi over 2 plus or minus 2 pi n, 3 pi over 2 plus or minus 2 pi n, no, there's nothing wrong with that. I think I actually have a boo boo with my notes I just caught. i got to fix that. All right, moving along. 
This could be a factoring question if I were to rewrite it. Let's subtract the sign. And I know we don't think of these as quadratics, but they are polynomials of sorts where you have a higher degree than a 1. They're not really polynomials by de definition, but we treat them like polynomials. So now we have a common sign that we're going to factor out. We have 2 sine squared x minus 1. So when I set each of these factors equal to 0, I get, change my color, uh, so sine of x equals 0. And this one's going to take a little bit of algebra, but we got this. 2 sine squared x minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to add 1 and divide by 2, and then square root both sides. So don't forget your algebra skills here, guys. We have sine x equals positive and negative square root of 2 over 2 when we rationalize that. And then this guy is already solved, so we got to think about when is sine 0. And that would be at 0, that would be at pi, and then when is sine square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2. And that's all of my pi over 4 family, so starting with 1 pi over 4, um, let's see. 3 pi over 4, I don't know why that's so difficult, uh, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And at none of these places are my sine functions undefined, so I don't have to worry about throwing anybody out. Um, oh gosh, yucky, yucky, yucky. Well, <laughs> okay. So what we could do is list out all of these, ding, 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 and then add 2 pi n to all of those. So we'd have like a big old list of one, two, three, four, five, six angles with plus two, plus and minus two pi n at the side. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna kind of sketch this out for a moment. So you got your pi over four families here, here, and here. And then we have the zero, and we have the pi also. So let's see here. I'm trying to think if there's a nicer way to write that. Apparently there is. <laughs> so if we start here, we're just adding a half pi each time, I guess. So I'm going to use a different color. These guys here, that would just be like pi over 4 plus and minus a half pi. But then you still have to use the 0 and pi as well. So that would be like, um, you know, 0 plus and minus a half rotation, so pi n. I don't know. There's probably an easier way to write that. I don't, I don't think I made it much easier. <laughs> if you look at my notes, I have like 0, pi, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. You know, I have them all listed down, and then I have plus and minus 2 pi. I use k in all my notes, and I have that listed down all the way for all of them. Surely not the simplest way to write all of your angles, all of your solutions. So, oh, thank goodness. All right, these next few are going to be between 0 and 2 pi only. So that's good news for me because that means I don't have to think really hard. I just have to look at the unit circle. So here I'm going to divide by 2. And I want to know when the cosine of x equals 1 half. So looking at our unit circle, when is cosine a 1 half? Um, let's see, that would be at pi over 3, and then 5 pi over 3? Triple check my notes so I don't mess this up. Yeah, yeah. And we only need one rotation worth, you know, one unit circle, so these are your solutions. That was nice, right? Some more of those. Um, let's try to isolate the sine function. So I'm going to add the 7 and subtract the 5, so that leaves me with like 2, right? So 2 sine x equals 2. So dividing both sides by 2, I get sine x equals 1. So when is sine equal to 1? That would be at one of the quadrantials. That would be at pi over 2, right? That was it. See, I, I much, much prefer the ones where they restrict you to one rotation because I don't like to think about how to simplify my answers. I guess in the grand scheme of things, guys, it really doesn't, don't get hung up on trying to simplify those weird rotation ones. All right, so we have 4 sine squared x times tangent x minus tangent x equals 0. So this is another good case of maybe we should try factoring out that common tangent. 
So removing the tangent leaves me with that is ugly writing. All right, four sine squared x minus one. So we have that zero property again, where we're going to set each one of these functions equal to zero. So when is tangent zero, and then the four sine squared x minus one has to be equal to zero. So for tangent equaling zero, remember it's sine over cosine. Good morning, Dad. If you so sine over cosine would be zero. When, when does that happen? Let's see, let's see. That is at um, zero. <laughs> and that is at pi, right? Negative one, but whatever, still comes out to zero. So I'll hold on to those for a moment. Let's talk about solving this one. I'm going to add the one and divide by four. So sine squared equals one fourth. And then square rooting both sides. End up with sine of x equaling positive and negative one half. Um, all right, so <laughs> even to this day, I have to go back and triple check because my dyslexia doesn't allow me to keep these straight in my head. I have to like draw the whole unit circle. It's very irritating. All right, so this guy, oh my goodness, ready? Uh, oh gosh, it's all of the pi over sixes. So pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. Yuck. All right, so 0 and pi, keep those, and then you have pi over 6, um, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6, because it's positive and negative 1 half, so it's all, all of the families, parts of the family. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different places. And then none of those places produce an undefined tangent, because that's the other thing I have to worry about, is tangent's weird. All right, so... Good news. Thank goodness they didn't make me come up with the plus and minus 2 pi, you know, all solutions business there. All right, this next one, we're going to solve for this cosine function. Add the square root of 3 and divide by 2. So cosine of x equals square root of 3 over 2. That happens two places on my unit circle. Um, that happens at pi over 6 and at 11 pi over 6, right? And that's all they want. Those are my favorites. Right. <laughs> so this next section, we have to kind of hybrid two thoughts, and we have to remember all of our trig identities and trig traits, and we have to do some manipulation before we can solve. So recognizing when to factor is great, and then recognizing when we have to do some more trig trickery is even more exciting. Ready? Oops, I meant to move that. <laughs> I roll today. There we go. All right, so. I'm very happy to find out that they just want through one rotation of the unit circle. But look at this hot mess. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I think we need to do some trading. Oh, this has already worked out. Oh, goodness. You don't have to watch any of this. Okay. So on your paper, you can follow along if you'd like, or you can just wait for the mystery to happen here. They're going to do some trading, and it's going to happen right here. Secant squared is a trick trade for um, tangent squared plus 1. So we have 2 tangent squared x minus tangent squared plus 1, so that'll really be a minus tangent minus 1. And then we have a plus 3 equals 1 minus 2 tangent. So basically, I need to trade out for all of the same types of things. Now I have only tangent functions in my work, and that, that's good. Um, here, I'm going to subtract one of the tangent squares from this 2 tangent squared, and that's going to give me 1 tangent squared x. And then a minus 1 plus 3 would really be a plus 2. I haven't touched the right side at all yet. But now I can bring everything to one side. So if I were to add this 2 tangent over which, by the way, does not combine with the tangent squared, just like with polynomials. You can't combine unlike terms. And I can subtract the 1 over. Oh, boy. We're going to have some factoring. We have tangent squared x plus tan x plus 1 equals 0. Uh, time out, though. Apparently I lost the term. Oh, there's a 2 in front of that. Hello. This is a 2 tan. So this is a 2 tan here, so this is a 2 tan. Okay, good. 
I got nervous for a minute. I thought I had to do quadratic formula, and I was not happy. All right, so this, if you think of this as a quadratic, this is like x squared plus 2x plus 1. And you guys could factor that pretty easily by just saying x plus 1 times another x plus 1, or x plus 1 squared. So that's exactly the same factoring pattern we're going to use here. This is like tan of x plus 1 times another tan of x plus 1. So we're solving that factor twice, which we don't need to do, of course. So we're saying when is tan of x going to equal a negative 1 when I set this equal to 0. So I think about um, what parts of the unit circle would produce a tangent of negative 1, and we would be in quadrant 2 and 4, the pi over 4 family, so that would be what? This is 3 pi over 4, and this would be um, 8, 7 pi over 4. So thank goodness they only wanted one rotation. Our answers are, oops, I should have wrote that nice here, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Because after all that work, and actually, guys, that was like super, like, that was tricky. <laughs> I don't know how many of those we're going to see. Maybe a once in a while. Okay, so that was the same problem worked out. Um, this one is also worked out for you, and you'll notice that they haven't traded anything yet, but they've manipulated it in a way where um, because they couldn't do any Pythagorean trades, they kind of created one. So they squared both sides of the equation. And when you square this binomial, you get this lovely problem, right? And if we look closely, cosine squared, sine squared, like, oh my gosh, they're like all over the place, right? We can't have cosine and sine in the same algebraic equation because there's no nice traits. So what we want to do then is say sine squared, we could totally trade that for 1 minus cosine squared. And then we ended up with this really large grade equation that thankfully only has cosine. So once you brought everything to one side and collected all your like terms, you ended up with this essentially this quadratic um, that you had just a two term quadratic though so you could factor out a two cosine. And then when you factored out a two cosine, we still had cosine x plus 1 equals 0. So then when you took each factor and you set them equal to 0, you said 2x, 2 cosine x equals 0. So they divided by 2, and then they said, here you go. And then cosine of x plus 1 equals 0, which when you solve that, you got this guy. And then the solutions are um, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So again, some really tricky, like trading, recognizing that I can't have cosines and sines, so I do somehow create a Pythagorean identity where I could swap it out and have just cosines in that case. All right, so here we're on our own, right? No, this is the same one. No. Yeah, that was the same one. We're skipping that. Forget that. All right, <laughs> number nine. Now we're on, we're on our own. And then just to make matters worse, it says solve for all values of x. So once we find the unit circle ones, we have to then remember how to add um, the rotations. But be careful here, we have tangent this time. So we got to think. All right, tangent squared x equals 1. So I don't really think we have to do too much work here, guys. I think we're just going to square root both sides. So tan of x equals positive and negative 1. So I think about on the unit circle when that would occur. And that would be my pi's over 4 family. So what is that? That's pi over 4. This is 3 pi over 4. Uh, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. But instead of listing all those out and then saying plus and minus, you know, whatever rotations I wanted to do, um, I think the easiest way to write that would be to realize we're just adding a half pi each time. So what if we said pi over 4 plus and minus half pi? Would that work? Um, So, I don't know, I feel like it's a pretty nice way to write it. I have some other stuff written down in my notes. And that, oh, you know why? Because I didn't bother to make it prettier. Ah, I like, I like the way we wrote it. We're good. All right. <laughs> Forget my notes. They're ugly. All right, so again, all values. A little bit of a bummer here, though, guys, because we have sines and cosines. So I have to think to myself, self, you know, what can we trade out here? Let's talk about sine squared. <clears throat> Remember, sine squared is a trig trade, Pythagorean trig trade for 1 minus cosine squared. 
So that's what I'm going to trade out. Now remember, you have a 2 in front of this. So you have 2 minus 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x equals 1. And then unfortunately we do have what's shaping up to be a quadratic that we're going to factor. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this 1 over here. I'm going to rearrange everything. Uh, so I have 2, negative 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x plus 1. And I hate factoring when my lead term's negative, so then I'm going to trade everybody out, or divide everybody out, or multiply everybody by a negative 1. So, new quadratic that I'm factoring is 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1. That's better. Alright. So, factoring this, uh, lead terms have to be 2 cosine and cosine. In order to multiply the 2 cosine. And if you want to trade it out for, like, an old school quadratic... So all the cosines just swap out for just x's. Think about how you would factor this. You know, I'm pretty sure we'd go like this, right? 2x minus 1 and x plus 1. So using that same pattern here, 2 cosine minus 1 and then cosine plus 1. So then taking each of these factors, setting them equal to 0. 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. And cosine x. Oops, I'm skipping a few steps here. Plus 1 equals 0. So here, I want to know when the cosine is 1 half. And then here, I want to know when your cosine is negative 1. And then remember, we want all values of x, so that makes me a grumpy teacher. All right, let's start listing. So cosine 1 half would be at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. All right, all right. Triple checking my work. Yeah. And then cosine negative 1 would be at only a pi. So, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and a pi. Um, oh my goodness. So, I'm sure there's a quicker, nicer way to write this, guys, but for most of you on your homework, what you're going to do is you're just going to say this. pi plus and minus um, 2 pi n. That's what most, you know, first time around trig and pre-calc students would do. I'm um, trying to think if there's an easier way to write all that. You could probably simplify the pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 business. I don't know how right off the top of my head. but So the moral of the story is, if this is your answer, I love it. Keep it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, this next one, oh, thank goodness, between 0 and 2 pi. So we don't have to worry about this sticking how to write it simple stuff anymore. All right, so again, cosine, sine, I can't, I can't handle an equation with both cosine and sine in it. So I need to make trick trades. In order to do that, I'm going to have to probably create some Pythagorean identities. So what if you squared both of these? Can we try that? So cosine squared equals sine squared which I know doesn't feel like it's better, but it is. Because remember, and it's your choice which one you swap out, um, I like cosines better, so I'm going to swap out sine for 1 minus cosine squared. And now I have all cosines, as far as trig functions go. So if I was to add this cosine squared over, I'd have 2 cosine squared x equals 1. So I added this guy over. And then divide by 2 on both sides. is ugly today. So I have cosine squared x equals 1 half. And then of course we're going to square root both sides. Algebra scales kicking in. We got cosine x equals positive and negative square root of 2 over 2 when I rationalize. So then I think self, where is cosine square root of 2 over 2? Um, and that's my friend the pi over 4 families, right? And positive and negative, so it's all four quadrants. So we have pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And I think that's all they want, right? So I'll just list out those four. They don't want all rotations, they just want one rotation. Good news. Alright. Oh, graph to check. <laughs> Alright, when we're done, what we're going to want you to do, and feel free to do this, I have to stop my lesson though. 
you're going to type this baby into your calculator, into Y1, and you're going to make sure that um, you set your your domain, so x min make 0, and x max make 2 pi, and then make sure that whatever solutions we get, that it is where they intersect, or in this case they'd be intersecting 0. So you can either set y2 as 0, or you could just do the 0 finder. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, so let's algebra this up. Cosines and tangents, no thank you. Um, maybe we could trade tangent out for sine over cosine. That would be a good fix because look, then the cosines are going to cancel. Oh, that didn't really help me though. <laughs> because look, <sighs> now I have sine and cosine. <laughs> Alright, so let's think. Hmm. Why did I do that? That was dumb. Back up. The graphic set me off on a tizzy, huh? There's a common cosine, a bruzo. Take the cosine out. Gosh, I quit some days. All right, so we have square root of 3 times the tangent of x minus 1. That's better, that's better. All right, so cosine equals 0. And then when does the square root of 3 tan x minus 1 equals 0? So solving for this guy, you'd add the 1. And divide by square root of 3. And I know normally we'd rationalize this, but I'm going to leave it like that for a moment. Because if you think about setting up sine over cosine, that's the fraction that would occur before you rationalize it. So I'm just kind of cutting out the middleman as far as simplification. So when is cosine 0? That's a good, good idea. Let's think about that. So pi over 2. <laughs> 3 pi over 2. Ooh. He thinks we're going to have a problem here, guys. We'll come back to that in a second. All right, so when is tangent going to give you 1 over uh, square root of 3? So that would be like when your sine is a 1 half, and you have to divide it by the square root of 3 over 2. So that would be at the pi over 6's, right? So pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, yeah. Okay, so normally I would just circle these four, but i got to go back and think. Remember the very first question we did where, yeah, we found answers for both of the factors, but if I go back to the original problem, there's a big old tangent function here. And remember, tangent is not defined at pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. We actually have to cross these off because they're not going to work for the equation as a whole. And that's why it says here, make sure you graph to check. Because when you go to graph this, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but you're only going to see two places where it intersects over this domain. You're not going to see four. So that would be our first hint that like something weird's going on. And then, um, of course, graphing is just always a great way to check. But we can't rely on graphing. We have to be able to do the algebraic swaps, too. So I know what some of you are thinking. You're like, I'm just going to graph everything. Well, I'm not going to accept answers that are like you know, 2.138. Yeah, I need nice radiant answers. This is a skill that we're going to need for our calculus in the future. So I got good news and bad news. Good news is this lesson's done, kind of. <laughs> the bad news is there's a part two. And um, it's interesting and a little more rigorous as far as your skills needed to solve. And there's some extra exciting topics that are coming up in the next part of the lesson. So, best wishes.